now the truth, the true story that's the background to this book is one which has sort of been part of my life, I think, from the word go. It is the case of Timothy Evans, who was hanged in 1950 for the murder of actually his 14-month-old child, but he is also thought to have killed his wife by strangling both of them. And at the time, in 1950, he was considered to be banged to rights. He was a man with a very low IQ. He lied to the police over and over again, all sorts of different versions of the same story, at one point confessing and another point denying that he'd done this. He was thought by uh, relatives and neighbours who knew him to have a terrible temper. Uh, he and his wife had been heard rowing. And they thought, OK, done deal, simple, end of. And he lived in a house called Ten Rillington Place in Notting Hill, which in those days was very, very run down. It was not the she-she haven of boutiques and yummy mummies and all that. It was grim, and it was still grim when I went to school there in the 70s, just around the corner. Now, Evans was hanged. Everyone forgot about it. Three years later, in 1953, Christie, who was his downstairs neighbour, moved out of his flat, which he had uh, the lower floor and the garden at Ten Rillington Place. And the man who moved in, in the course of just looking around to see what he could find, peeled some wallpaper away and found an alcove with three dead women inside it. And the police were called. And they tore apart this flat. And they found not only three dead women in the alcove, his wife was under the floorboards, and there were two more bodies in the skeletonized form buried in the garden. And it was very clear that either, very unlikely, two killers had lived in the same house, or Christie, who, judging from the date of the skeletons, had begun his career as a serial killer during the war, ten years or so earlier, had killed not only Mrs. Evans, but 14-month-old Geraldine as well. Um, and of course, the police weren't the only people who put two and two together. Christie was hanged, um, and the Evans case was reopened. Um, then some, some years later, um, there was an inquiry, actually, uh, which Christie spoke to just before he was hanged. Uh, it's called the Scott Henderson Inquiry, and Scott Henderson found that Evans was guilty. People thought this was a whitewash, so there was a campaign for another one, and Ludovic Kennedy, who wrote Tem Rillington Place, on which the film, which came out in 1971, same name, is based. It's a wonderful film with John Hurt and uh, David Attenborough. No, not David Attenborough. Certainly not David Attenborough. No gorillas anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Richard Attenborough, wearing a sort of big full stoned head. What most creepy person. He, he just, a fantastic actor playing creepy people. Um, and because of pressure from people like Ludovic Kennedy, the case was reopened, and this time it was chaired by Lord Justice Braben, and he decided, and it's actually unclear if you read the transcript quite how they got to this conclusion, but he decided that Evans had not killed his baby daughter, which is the crime for which he was hanged, but had killed his wife, for which he was never tried. So Evans was granted a pardon, but his name actually has never been cleared. And the family in uh, 2003 asked if this, this could happen. And um, there was a, gosh, she went to the requisite power, whatever that is. And they said that an uh, ex gratia payment was made to them in recognition of this miscarriage of justice. But actually, his name has never been officially cleared, which I've always felt really rather strange. Because I would have thought that now everything we could possibly know about this is in the public domain. There is no reason to to hold it back. Um, and it's rather peculiar. 